now, Chip Hanauer, the young man in the Miller American. He's got 800 points. He's got himself in position maybe to take over the national point lead. He kind of gave us a little bit of a tour of this fine Emerald Cup. two different hulls to do that. Uh, this particular boat is a turbine boat. Uh, the biggest thing you're going to see is, as far as difference between this boat and some of the other boats on the beach is this big stack. And what this is is one big exhaust stack taking a lot of heat away from this Lycoming turbine engine. A lot of people get confused between a turbine and a jet. This looks like a jet, but we are using thrust to make mechanical horsepower to do one thing, and that's to turn this propeller. Now, a jet makes thrust and just blows air out the back of the engine. We make thrust and blow a bison turbine wheels that, in turn, are hooked to this propeller. You spin this propeller about 13,000 RPM. Some of the problems you incur by doing that is literally throwing the blades right off the propeller. We've had cases where the propeller actually loses a blade. The blade will come off right here, which is what we call the hub. The blade comes spinning off of here through the exhaust pipe to the top of the exhaust pipe and through the wing. When that happens, it sets up a tremendous amount of side load, taking this propeller shaft and basically turning it into nothing more than a pretzel. The next thing that is really important back here, and this is really the business end of the boat. This is where everything that's gonna work is either gonna work or not. If something goes wrong back here, you run into big trouble. One of the things that can do that is a rudder. Obviously, the rudder is used to turn the boat. Uh, we've had a situation where the rudder literally comes off the boat. Probably the scariest situation I've ever had as a race driver is losing this rudder right here at this race course in Tri-Cities a year ago running a 153 mile an hour lap. To do that 153, we were running about 100, I'm sorry, about 204 in the straightaways. The rudder literally came off the back of the boat just by the amount of pressure of the water going by this rudder literally pulled these bolts right through the aluminum and uh, basically sent the boat freewheeling with no way to steer it. The last thing that's really a, a business part of the rear end of the boat is the wing. The wing is uh, made out of fiberglass and carbon fiber. And simply by changing the angle of that wing, sometimes as small as a 32nd of an inch, will change the boat ride entirely. Now that can be done from the beach, but I do not have a mechanism in the cockpit where I can actuate a change uh, while I'm underway. What we do, that's what we do with testing. We go up, try the boat, come back in, and we may move that wing one way or the other to either pick the back end of the boat up or push it down. This is what I refer to as my office, and uh, this is really the, where I have control of the boat, and uh, this has all been specially tailored to fit me and be comfortable for me. If we were to put somebody else in the boat, it probably wouldn't fit them very well. First thing we've done is we've lowered me down inside the boat to keep me as safe as possible. Then we've surrounded myself with a very rigid structure built out of honeycomb aluminum, aluminum that's designed to absorb any impact should the boat go upside down. Then we padded it and built it so that with my helmet on, there's not much distance my head can travel in any one direction. That's to support my neck because if the boat does go over, I'm going to take about 200 mile an hour shot of water, which is extremely dense. We want to support my neck as much as we can. To take advantage of all this protection around me, we've got to, to a seatbelt system. This is called a six-point harness. It takes two people to get me into it, but to get out of it, it's all very quick release. I simply turn this buckle to the right, and just by moving on my hips, it all comes off. This is obviously the dashboard and what I look at as I drive the Miller America. And one of the safety features they've built into it is, should the boat be upside down and we're underwater and maybe this has collapsed a little bit, they want to get me out of the boat. The steering wheel is designed to come off very easily. I simply put my hand in the back of the hub, pull a mechanism that moves up and down, and that clears this opening to get me out. What I look at during a race most critically are these two gauges here. This first one is called an EGT gauge, and this tells me the temperature of the motor. If there's anything that can hurt a turbine engine, it's temperature. We run our engine right around 750 degrees. The next thing that's very important is this. 
it's a tachometer, but it's a little different than a tachometer in an automobile because, number one, it has two needles instead of one because the turbine has two parts rotating, one part called a compressor that at one RPM and what we call a power section, and uh, they run at a different RPM. The other thing that's different about this gauge is the numbers you see here are not real numbers, but percentages. Instead of reading 10,000 RPM, we read 100% and then that is calculated into real numbers later on. To start the boat, uh, it's a little bit tricky. There's a number of things that you've got to play all simultaneously. The first thing that go on are these. They're called the igniters. Put that switch down. This, we start on 24 volt initially. That switch goes down. Then this third switch, it's called start fuel. It's a priming system. It dumps a little bit of fuel in there, much like newspaper to get a fire in your fireplace started. And then after we get to about 200 degrees back on the CGT gauge, I'll go to 48 volts. That really kicks the motor in the rear end and gets it spinning up. Well, I'll stay on those switches until the engine reaches 45% RPM. And at 45% RPM, the engine can maintain itself. They'll pull the electrical cord away from the dock, and Charlie Leifer will give me the, the hand signal that it's okay and go out onto the race course. The other gauge that's really critical and helps the driver making a good start is this, and it's simply a digital stopwatch. The five-minute gun goes, and when I see that five-minute gun fire, I press this button, and it begins to count down. When this number reads one minute, I know I'm one minute away from the start, and begin to position myself on the race course so that I can get that very, very critical good start. <laughs> 